Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are revisiting the age-old battle between the Radeon RX 580 and GTX 1060. Though the battle really began at least for AMD with the Radeon RX 480. The 480 was released back in June of 2016, so almost four years ago now. Time absolutely flies in this business, but yeah, pretty crazy to think how long ago that was, particularly given this part is technically still on sale today and is sold in fairly large volumes. The RX 480 was originally intended to battle NVIDIA's upcoming Pascal-based GTX 1060, which was released just one month later. And when I say upcoming, I mean obviously four years ago. Back then, the 8GB RX 480 was priced at $240 US, and the GTX 1060 6GB at $250 US. Three months after release, we compared the two head-to-head -head in 22 games and found, on average, the GeForce GPU was 6% faster. That said, we noticed in more recently released titles, or at least titles based on modern APIs such as DirectX 12 and Vulkan, that the RX 480 was almost always faster. Half a dozen of the titles tested supported a modern API, and when comparing the data across those select titles, the GTX 1060 6GB was actually 5% slower on average. So it seemed to us that over time, the Radeon RX 480 would end up being the faster product, though we did note that the GTX 1060, while not just faster at the time, was also more efficient and therefore AIB models generally ran cooler and quieter. But in the end, we concluded by saying it is a difficult choice and we'd pick based on the games you intend on playing and of course pricing in your region. And then two months later, we revisited this comparison for the final battle of 2016. And this was largely due to AMD's massive Crimson Relive driver update that promised some nice performance gains. It also afforded us the opportunity to update our games list and include some newer titles. So with 19 games in total, we found the GTX 1060 6GB was now just 1% faster on average. So in other words, overall performance was the same. And again, it really came down to the titles you planned on playing that would determine which option was best for you. Then less than a year after the release of the RX 480, AMD refreshed it in April of 2017 as the RX 580 with a mild overclock. They also reduced the MSRP by $10 US. When comparing similar spec models, we found the frequency increase resulted in about a 6% performance boost on average. Now to combat this new refreshed RX 480, NVIDIA released a 9 gigabits per second version of the GTX 1060, which improved memory bandwidth by 13% over the standard 8 gigabits per second model. And that sounds reasonably substantial, but without increasing the core clock frequency, this had little impact on performance. At times we saw up to a 4% performance improvement, but overall it really did nothing to improve the averages. The end result being after a 27 game benchmark in mid 2017, the Radeon RX 580 was 3% faster than the GTX 1060 9 gigabits per second model. So the tables had turned, though it was still fair to say that the performance between the two cards was really still much the same. And again, it really came down to the games you played. A year later in mid 2018, I revisited this battle once again with 25 games, many of them new and previously untested for this comparison. This time the GTX 1060 was found to be 3% faster on average, but again, performance was much of a muchness and things hadn't started to swing in one brand's favour. Then the most recent update was published in mid 2019 with our biggest sample of games yet at 38, and this time the RX 580 was around 3% faster than the GTX 1060, but again, much of a muchness overall. Now, it's 2020, if you hadn't noticed, and having recently compared the GTX 1060 with newer GPUs, such as the RX 5600 XT, I thought we might as well take a moment to update the RX 580 results and see how those two stack up. The RX 580 is still on sale and is arguably the best value sub $200 US graphics card on the market, easily beating out the 5500 XT and the 1650 Super. It's possible right now to buy an 8GB RX 580 for as little as $160 US, and that makes this ancient GPU much better value than the latest offerings, which is a tad bit sad, but that's the situation we're in right now, so let's not dwell on it, and we'll just focus on this particular comparison. So we'll go over the results for about a dozen of the newer titles, and then we'll check out some of the head-to-head -head comparisons with all 32 games in a few quick breakdown graphs. For detailed information regarding the performance for the rest of the games, please check our Patreon page. You'll find all those graphs over there for free.
Now, as usual, our Corsair GPU test rig built inside the Crystal Series 570X has been used, and inside we have a Core i9 9900K clocked at 5 gigahertz with 32 gigabytes of DDR4-3400 memory. Representing the green team is the Gigabyte Aorus GTX 1060, 6 gigabyte, 9 gigabits per second model, and for the red team, the Gigabyte Aorus RX 580 XTR 8 gigabyte. The latest available display drivers at the time of testing have been used and all results have been updated for the comparison. I think that's about everything, let's get to the good stuff. First up we have Rainbow Six Siege using its new Vulkan implementation. Previously using DirectX 11, the RX 580 was around 15% faster than the GTX 1060. However, we're now looking at around twice that margin as the RX 580 was 27% faster at 1080p and 30% faster at 1440p. Obviously, NVIDIA hasn't bothered to optimize their drivers for Pascal GPUs using the newer API in this title. World War Z is another title that makes use of Vulkan, and here the RX 580 is seen to be 23% faster at 1080p and 27% faster at 1440p, so another massive win for the red team. And Resident Evil is yet another title that makes use of a low-level API, and here the RX 580 comfortably beats the GTX 1060 by a 23% margin at 1080p and 24% at 1440p. Red Dead Redemption 2 really requires at least 8 gigabytes of VRAM when using the high quality settings and as a result we see rather poor 1% low performance from the GTX 1060 due to its 6 gigabyte frame buffer. So while the RX 580 was 18% faster when comparing the average frame rate at 1080p, it was a whopping 77% faster when comparing the 1% low data and more crucially it didn't suffer from stuttering. Apex Legends uses a modified version of Valve Software Engine, and previously we found the RX 580 to have quite a large performance advantage in this title. However, after the most recent update, performance has swung around Nvidia's favour, and for now at least, the GTX 1060 is up to 12% faster. PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds uses the Unreal Engine 4, which is optimised for Nvidia hardware, and as a result, the GTX 1060 does beat out the RX 580 by a handy margin in this title, offering 14% more frames at 1080p and 10% more at 1440p. Interestingly enough, although Fortnite uses the Unreal Engine 4, AMD has been able to optimise the RX 580 for better performance. I know AMD was focused for quite some time on improving performance in this super popular title, and it seems they've done just that, as the RX 580 was faster at both tested resolutions by up to 12%, so that is really an impressive result by AMD. Performance in Assassin's Creed Odyssey is neck and neck, no real winner here as at most we saw just a single frame in it. Interestingly, despite being an Nvidia sponsored title, Metro Exodus plays much better on the RX 580, though again it does use a low level API, in this case DirectX 12. Here the Radeon GPU was at least 23% faster at 1080p and 21% faster at 1440p. Performance in the newly released Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is very similar, and this is a DX11 title using the highly popular Unreal Engine. Last year when comparing these two GPUs and testing with F1 2018, the RX 580 and GTX 1060 were neck and neck. However, with this latest version, F1 2019 makes use of DirectX 12, and here the Radeon GPU has a huge performance advantage that sees it deliver 21% more frames at 1080p and 23% more at 1440p. And last up, we see performance in Call of Duty Modern Warfare is fairly even, though here the RX 580 was 6% faster at 1080p and 9% faster at 1440p, but not a huge difference, though you will notice the performance boost at 1440p. Okay, so the Radeon RX 580 looked pretty dominant in that 12 game sample, but I did test many more games, so let's see how the 580 and 1060 stack up across 32 new and popular titles. At 1080p, the RX 580 was 5% faster on average, and looking at the results overall, you have a much better chance of receiving an extra 10% or more performance with the Radeon GPU on modern titles. Many of the newly released titles where the RX 580 didn't look so hot used the Unreal Engine, such as The Outer Worlds and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, for example. Of the 32 games tested, 10 of them saw margins within 5%, so I would consider those a tie. There were, however, 16 games where the RX 580 was faster by a 6% margin or greater, and just 6 games where it was slower by a 6% margin or greater. So the RX 580 is clearly the more consistent performer in 2020.
and the margins grow in AMD's favour at 1440p. Here the RX 580 was 8% faster on average, its biggest win over the GTX 1060 since this battle started. It would seem as though the extra 2GB of VRAM is now coming into play, and we certainly saw this in titles such as Red Dead Redemption 2 for example. So, roughly four years after making our first big benchmark comparison between these two GPUs, it seems many of our original thoughts were fairly accurate. We suspected that due to the strong initial low-level API performance of the RX 480, that it would eventually end up being the superior GPU. We didn't recommend buying the RX 480 on that hunch alone, as it was really impossible to know just how long it would be before the superior DirectX 12 and Vulkan performance would pay off. Had you planned to keep the RX 480 for over four years, then the better low-level API support would have been a major consideration. But if you upgrade like most people, which I think is about every three years or so, then probably not as much. That said, since the RX 480 was released and then refreshed as the RX 580, there's really been no obvious alternative at the $180 to $250 US price range. Nvidia made an attempt with the GTX 1660, but offering just 15% more performance didn't really make the $220 US upgrade worth it. As for the GTX 1060 6GB, despite the poor DirectX 12 and Vulkan support, which often saw the RX 580 delivering in excess of 20% more performance, Overall performance was still decent. For the most part, the 6GB frame buffer is still fine, and really you can quite easily work around that limitation anyway. So while the RX 580 has clearly aged better, the GTX 1060 6GB hasn't exactly turned out to be a poor choice after all these years. You'd need to spend at least $230 US on a GTX 1660 Super for around 30% more performance, or $330 for an RTX 2060 for a little over 50% more performance, and at that point the 5600 XT becomes a consideration. Speaking of which, I will be comparing the RTX 2060 and 5600 XT head to head in over 30 games later this week, so be sure to keep an eye out for that one. As for this video, well I think we're done, so I'll wrap it up here. Don't forget you can grab all the graphs over on our Patreon page for free, and if you would like to sign up, again, completely optional, no pressure, just if you want to and become an official Harbour Unbox member, you will gain access to our monthly live stream, which we will be doing next week. There's also our exclusive Discord chat, which is just a really cool place if you're a PC enthusiast to talk about hardware, news, ask questions, any of that kind of stuff, and Tim and I are quite active in there as well. But yeah, apart from that, there's the like thing, do that. Don't worry about that one. You can subscribe for more content like this and other tech-related stuff that we, we tend to do. Uh, we also have merch, so check that out if you're interested. But yeah, above all else, just thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>